Good evening, everyone. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Rosamira Guillen from the Cotton Top Tamarind Project, Proyecto Titi, based in Colombia. They have been partners with the Wildlife Conservation Network for 10 years now. They have an incredible program. Rosamira and her, Johanna and their team do the most amazing education work that we all in, you know, aspire to do. Um, this year has been a great year for Rosamira. She won the Whitley Fund for Nature Award um, and was presented the award um, in May this year by the Princess Royal, Princess Anne in London. So this is a pre very prestigious award and it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Rosamira. Good evening, everybody. It's a great pleasure for me to be here. Thank you, Shivani, for such a wonderful introduction. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, this is the highlight of our year to come and share with you all of what's going on and what has happened over the last year, thanks to your support. Um, and uh, this one-pound little monkey, unfortunately, is facing extinction in the wild. Um, due to extensive deforestation of their habitat and um, hunting for the pet trade. We at Proyecto TT want to share with you today our vision, our long-term vision, as we expand the impact of our conservation work to new areas in northern Colombia where cotton tops are in the wild, and so uh, we can guarantee a long-term future for cotton tops, and we want to make you a part of it by telling you the stories and really motivating you to support the work we're doing in the field to guarantee a long-term future for cotton tops. And this cute little monkey is very unique. It only lives in that little corner of our whole planet. Nowhere else in the wild you will see cotton top tamarins, only in a very restricted area in northern Colombia, in South America. We work in one of the very few forest fragments that are left in northern Colombia, where cotton top lives in the wild. And we get to see these wonderful animals every day. We go into the forest, and that day-to-day -day contact with cotton top tamarins really creates strong bonds between our team in Colombia and this beautiful-looking monkey. And those bonds feel like you're coming into the forest to visit family every day. And just like visiting family every day, you know, you always want to see what's going on, what's happening, what's the latest gossip for uh, <laughs> the day-to-day -day, um, activities. We get really excited when the babies are born every year, uh, actually by March, April, um, May. And, and usually twins once a year in each family group. And uh, we also sad when they had to leave home, uh, very similarly to what happens to our teenagers, and they're ready to go and um, make their own lives. And we, we do get very sad when we lose some of these animals to the natural cycle of life through, through predators. And today I want to pay a tribute to Ray. This is one of the... Uh, dominant males, the dominant male on group, one of the study groups in, um, in our field site. And as you can see, he was the one carrying the transmitter that allows us to find them in the forest every day. And um, Ray was the lifetime partner of Tamara, which has been one of our uh, females that has taught us so much about cotton tops in more than 25 years that we have been studying them in the wild. And uh, Ray passed about a month ago um, due to a raptor bird that found it very tasty. And fortunately, that's the cycle of life. But he taught us, he taught us a lot. And fortunately, we've been able to continue to see Tamara and the rest of the family every day as we walk into the forest. And, and it doesn't cease to amaze us uh, some of the things we don't know yet. So Tamara's a widow now. And something we don't know is how long is a grieving period uh, for cotton top tamarind, right? Uh, we do saw her less than a month ago, actually. A young male joined the group, and they've been grooming a lot. 
So, you know, we're like, come on, Tamar, it's only been a month. My <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> but things are going well. So I guess we're happy for Tamara that she's reestablishing her, you know, family life and continue to be a ferocious leader that she is for her group and teaching us still a lot after so many years that we have been um, studying here in the wild. So, so it feels like family for us to see the animals every day. And we, we are very proud that we have been able to build four pillars that support cotton top tamarind conservation. This is a summary of what we do. We have learned so much by going into the forest every day and seeing cotton tops in the wild. And we have made tremendous efforts to protect the habitat in which they live. As we also get kids excited as much as we are excited about cotton top tamarind conservation and providing com alternatives for the communities that live very close to this forest to um, reduce the use of forest resources for uh, survival. This is basically some of, some of our, I want to share with you some of our recent accomplishments and um, all of what we've been able to do for cotton tops by protecting forests and creating uh, new reserves and getting kids like Nelson, who is one of our community leaders, very young leaders, really excited about conservation. You can see uh, the picture when Nelson started to our first of, uh, the first one of our community, uh, sorry, our ed education programs and how he has grown to be a very young man. Uh, and we are very happy to share with you that Nelson started going to vocational school this year to become a natural resource manager and come back and hopefully work for us and be a, one of our major ambassadors in the communities for cotton top tamarind conservation. And he represents basically this, the, the model that we've been trying to build, it's shaped as a pyramid where you, you spread a lot of information, but you focus on those kids that really have strong leadership and get them trained, get them educated, and get them to be the future leaders that we need for uh, securing a long-term impact of our conservation efforts. And um, so we have right now two scholars that are going to technical school. They will be our interns next year in, uh, for our research and conservation work. And um, they will hopefully come and, and join us, join our team, just as Rosa here joined our team this year. Rosa was also part of all of the education programs since she was in, you know, 13, 14 years old. And now this year, she became one of our education assistants and is working with us to teach everything she has learned about cotton tops. She wants to be an environmental engineer and we're certainly there to help her achieve that goal and, and strengthen that kind of impact that we wanna deliver on people and especially the younger generations. And we have also increased the number of plastic bags that are not going into forests and rivers in the areas where cotton tops live and uh, becoming the beautiful eco mochilas that I know a lot of you support. And I encourage you to stop by our table before you go and do your Christmas shopping there so you can support the wonderful work we are doing in turning waste into useful uh, material that provides women with an opportunity to generate an income and does not have to rely on forest um, uh, exploitation. And we have also been able to you know, generate a lot of smiles all around the world by taking these little guys um, with us and spreading the message and giving women like Hirlesa the opportunity to uh, also spread the world and make a living out of hand making these beautiful cotton top tamarinds. And I want to share with you something that really made us proud last year. Right after we came to the expo, we were awarded this amazing media prize in Colombia. Uh, we participated with 90 other institutions uh, or NGOs in Colombia for an environmental prize for the main TV station. And we were able to take our conservation message uh, to primetime TV for a month in December and let everybody know about our work, and I want to share the 30-second video that we were able to release on prime time last year. Lo conoces? Así como nuestro café y como nuestro sombrero volteado, el titi cabeciblanco es 100% colombiano. Su hogar, 
el bosque está desapareciendo y el peligro de extinción es evidente. Es único en el mundo y vive solo aquí. Depende de ti salvar al tití. Vincúlate y apóyanos. Guys, this was amazing for us to be able to have the possibility to take this 30-second commercial into prime TV. You can imagine for us, it was, it was truly an opportunity. First of all, as you can see, we wanted to create the sense of pride on a species that is only in our country. And then we really stressed on the 100% Colombian uh, fact. But we also wanted to get people involved in saying, you can help. You know, reach out to us and come and help us. And of course, we were inundated with emails and, and our mochila sales increased, which was, a, which was great. And it gave us a lot of visibility in our own country. So we're, we were very proud. And you can see all of our team, everybody in our team, these are the people that are making this happen in our country. And you can see all these happy faces, you know. And we, uh, we come from different backgrounds and come from different regions of Colombia, all 100% Colombians as well. And uh, we are different ages as well, uh, but we all share for sure the fact that Cotton tops are the cutest monkey they are in the whole world. So this was a great accomplishment. And as, as Shivani said, we, we recently also enjoyed very much the international attention uh, by getting the Whitley Award and the opportunities that this prestigious prize has given us to expand our conservation work uh, to other areas in Northern Colombia. So we feel very proud about being able to get our word and our message uh, far away in the country. And, and outside the country as well. But again, I, I filled you with a lot of emotion and good news, but we are facing challenges that continue to make our work um, you know, hard to do and very challenging as well. And um, you can see that the four pillars of our work continue to be threatened by extensive deforestation and by selective logging, and sadly, by capturing cotton tops in the wild for the pet trade as well as domestic use of the forest resources that you know, are used by local communities. Um, and uh, even though we have accomplished a lot, we still have um, challenges with, with the size of the population that in a, the area where we are working remains uh, stable, but it continues to decline in other areas where we are not present. And that became one of our major uh, hopes that we could find the opportunities to go to other places and expand our conservation work. Uh, there's only 2% of the forest left in Northern Colombia for cotton tops, and we, we need to make a difference for that. So we set out ourselves a vision that makes us wanna see healthy cotton top populations in well-preserved and interconnected forests. That's very key to uh, our success is being able to secure forests and make sure that they connect so cotton tops can remain healthy and of course live in harmony with human communities. <laughs> very cute. <laughs> As we work very hard to make cotton tops become a symbol of Colombian biodiversity and that's when the 100% Colombian comes to play a very important message for our um, country fellows. So I want to tell you a little bit about what we've been doing this year to increase and expand the conservation work we're doing in Colombia. And um, the areas on top are the areas where we had been working for a long time. And then the red circle represents the priority area we established when we learned that there's only this very few little for forest fragments scattered around the northern area of Colombia. We selected the area of San Juan as a priority because there is a big national park right in the middle of that red circle, and you can see it's like the most significant uh, cluster of forest fragments that, are, um, that show in, in the map. So our, our mission this year was to be able to go into all of these places to see if there's actually good forest for cotton tops in these places, and at the same time, um, see if cotton tops are present. So we put together you know, a very experienced team for the field, and they did a lot of walking. So we, we, did, we calculated how long they have walked, and the, I think it's a distance comparable from San Francisco to LA by foot, going up and down, up and down the hills, uh, rivers, and um, 
mountains and flat areas, looking for cotton tops and looking for good forest. <clears throat> the good news is that we did see cotton top tamarins. Cotton top tamarins are on those forest fragments. They're still in the wild in that area. The not so good news is that as we walked all of these areas, these images were more and more and more frequent. So cattle ranching basically is displacing the forest areas that are in that map and basically isolating the forest fragments that are still left and leaving them in disconnected from um, in within themselves. Cattle ranching is a big, big local tradition uh, in the northern region of Colombia. And unfortunately, we saw a lot of slash and burn happening to increase the plantations of teak and eucalyptus, and sadly, palm oil coming into our country. The, th this is something that is very ironic because you, you, you know that Colombia had been facing challenges with political stability for a long time. And um, fortunately, the situation is changing for the good of the people and there's peace talks going in our country that are about to finish, about to be concluded next year. But um, that was actually good for wildlife. These places that we couldn't go in the past, the forest grew back and it was recovering. Now that we get into an end of a conflict in Colombia, then as we are going into these places to look for cotton tops, so are also going the big companies going with palm oil plantations and teak. So um, this, this gave us a sense of, of urgency and, and being, a, you know, this image we caught in one of the uh, walks that we visited and we found these two kids that were just, had just hunted this little cotton top and he was getting into the pet trade. Uh, fortunately, we were there at that moment and we were able to discourage the kids to um, take the, the cotton top gave him a very long pep talk about cotton tops and the 100% Colombian thing. And the animals were, you know, immediately released. And then they got t-shirts and plush toys. And, and we were able to, yeah, it's funny because the guys were walking, you know, with the backpacks and all they had in the backpacks were plush toys to give away to people and tell them the message about cotton tops. But um, this made us think how important it is to have our presence in these places. Because even though we're not, you know, the authority to, to confiscate or to, uh, you know, get people the, uh, legally uh, responsible for this, they recognize us as people who are saving cotton tops, the people we have gained respect and recognition. So um, out of all the green forests that you see in this picture, just less than a third, it's actually good forest for cotton top tamarins. So the situation is really, really rapidly uh, affecting the viability of cotton tops in this area. And, um, and, and again, I mean, it gave us a sense of urgency, but we cannot sit down and wait to do more studies and to, we need to get right into action. So we immediately sat down and did a lot of planning with our team and with people that had uh, helped us in, in, in advising the, uh, the right um, areas to, to uh, intervene. And we selected that the green circle that you see there, it's a big national park, and we started securing land for cotton tops right away. So we were able to establish, just right before I came, we signed the paperwork for a uh, hundred and, oops, sorry. It's, it's, um, it's a 172 acre property that is critical to the connectivity of the big national park into other forest fragments in the area. And uh, this is gonna become you know, a center of conservation within the area that we are expanding to. And, um, and it is a little, this, is, this little graphic shows um, the big national park and our immediate action is gonna be connecting this national park to all of these forest fragments. So this red circle shows the property that is critical to the connectivity of one of the ends of the national park. And uh, we're actually gonna be intervening 125 acres uh, immediately to be able to create those green arrows and those corridors. We're very excited about this possibility because it's, that's, that's exactly what we need. We need to get right into the ground, create forest, plant new forest, and connect these uh, uh, fragments so cotton tops can healthy, 
can be healthy and can exchange healthy in, um, in the future, um, for their future survival. And uh, basically, we're, we're talking about each acre for the next five years, uh, costing $2,500 to be able to uh, restore it and guarantee it. And we are very excited because we're going to be able to not only uh, protect cotton top tamarins, but the connectivity of many, many important mammals that live in this uh, forest where cotton top tamarins also are, and especially jaguars, which uh, we are working with a local NGO that is also working in connectivity for jaguars. So partnering up, it makes us more effective and effective in getting uh, the benefits to all of this uh, Colombian native wildlife. Now, we're also very excited because we're going to be able to integrate more of our community work into these restoration efforts. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to sign conservation agreements with the property owners, and we're going to ask them to isolate a portion of their land for forest growth and connectivity, and we're going to help them make their property, their uh, plantings or their crops sustainable. These are small farmers that usually have a lot of challenges with economics to invest in their crops and as a way to sustain their living and their families. So we're going to work with them. And um, as, as, the as we uh, plant forests, they commit also to take care of this forest that we're planting, and we help them make the lands productive. So it's a win-win situation that we will uh, get um, to them, and, and hopefully we'll, we'll have uh, much more forest to provide for cotton top tamarins. And for those restoration areas, we need a lot of fencing. And of course, we're not going to do wooden fences. So we're going to tie our recycling, uh, so our recycling, plastic recycling programs and the production of our TT posts so we can avoid to do the, the wooden fence um, that is it's extensively used in, in Colombia and that basically kills a lot of trees every year. So, and we want to make you part of this project. So we're going to open up uh, an online campaign where you can buy one post for $15, and you can help us fence all of these restoration areas with recycled plastic um, uh, fences that actually provide extra income to the communities as they collect recycled plastic from bottles. And you would be surprised how much bottles and plastic are wasted in Colombia as anywhere else in the world. So our weekly routines collect 200 kilos of, of, of plastic every week. And we grind that plastic and take it to a center where they melt that plastic and make the posts. So please, I really encourage you as a way to support our work is being able to fence all of these restoration areas that are going to be good for cotton tops with these posts and then avoid using trees. So basically one post, saves one tree for cotton top tamarins. And of course, this goes along with our education programs that are being replicated in the community of San Juan and um, with uh, the four schools that are there and getting kids really excited about not only learning about cotton tops, but going into these areas and planting the trees that we're going to be planting for the restoration areas. So all of this comes together really nice in providing forests for cotton top tamarins getting the kids really excited and involved so we can have more Nelsons and more Rosas in our conservation areas and uh, be active in conservation and um, also get them really excited about cotton top tamarins. We really make them fun. <laughs> we make it fun for them and we make it fun for us. Some of you have saw Tito the cotton top running around all over the place. That was actually my daughter, Sophia, who's there <laughs> wearing the costume. She's big time into it, as you can see. <laughs> And, um, but yeah, it's all about, about fun, about sharing the passion, about sharing the message, and you are a big part of it. You can see how much being part of the WCN network has meant for us and how much we have been able to accomplish for Cotton Tops. Thanks to your support. And thanks for being part of the network. And um, we know that we can make a difference for Cotton Tops. We are very excited about our growth, and we know that we will continue to share news, you know, positive news, but also challenges as we move forward in protecting the forest for the cutest little monkey there is in the world. Thank you very much.